and welcome to another episode of Patient Pulse. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Miguel Devo this month for a talk on vaping myths and realities and the impact that e-cigarettes may have on cardiovascular health. Dr. Devo is a pulmonary and critical care medicine specialist who cares for patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and general needs in pulmonary medicine. He is the co-director of the Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital Mechanical Ventilation Unit and he also teaches trainees at Brigham and Women's Hospital. So thank you so much for being here with us, Dr. Devo, and please take it away. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for the North American Thrombosis Forum for having me. So I'm a pulmonologist amongst uh, cardiologists, but this is a topic that is very important, and I'm going to be talking about vaping. But before saying that, let me now talk about why we're going to be talking about vaping. So three points that I would like to address. The first point is what is an e-cigarette? It sounds very simple, but I'm going to be talking a little bit more how these things work. Second, how does vaping affect the heart and the lungs? And that is an important point of is this a safe or not is a safe device? And three, can e-cigarette helps adults quit smoking? We were listening and hearing a lot about preventable risk factor for cardiovascular diseases. Smoking is one of them. Can this be a conduit? And be careful that this is also the way this kind of device has been marketed in the United States. So this is the e-cigarette. We call it e-cig, e-hookah, mods, vape, vape pens, and you can see a lot of different names. And it comes in different shapes. Some of them even in the shape of a USB port. So very easy to hide, very easy to disguise. And that is important because from the design perspective, it's something everybody can in one way or another. And this is something that also is attracting our young population, which is very well targeted for that. One thing that is important, and I hallmark here at the bottom, is that Vaping, e-cigarettes, or whatever you want to call it, is something that started in the U.S. market in 2007. So we're talking about less than 20 years of experience against the regular cigarette for which have many, many years of experience in understanding what are the health consequences of that. So now let me dive a little bit of how this thing is built. So we have a cylinder for which we have a rechargeable battery. From that recharger or battery, there is what we call a heating element or aerosolizer. There is then a container where is a cartridge or we refill it with a liquid, and that is the e-liquid, and that is what people can use as a disposable or we recharge it. The mouthpiece, once this gets heated and you warm this liquid, then we create the aerosol and that's why people is inhaling. What is interesting here for all of us is that we're not creating combustion, but also we're heating something and creating. So this is a little bit of the same technology from the disco uh, era where we have this steam going and we were dancing and inhaling and all that, but now it's made in a different way because now we have something that is the e-liquid or the liquid that needs to be heated in order to create this aerosol. And there are certain elements here that are important because we don't know if they are exactly very safe for us. Let me try to now talk about the illiquid. And we have this very fancy name and things that are propylene glycol, glycerol, nicotine, flavors, and probably other things like THC, which is the cannabis. And I'm going to divide and say whatever we inhale is a combination of all those things. And this is a, from the CDC, I'm going to divide in two different categories of elements that we are inhaling with this device. One is an addictive compound. It's either the nicotine or the cannabis. And the other part is something that needs to be warm in order to create this aerosol. And from there, what we know is that there are fully harmful or potentially harmful compounds, vitamin E, volatile organics compound, heavy metals, flavoring, and ultrafine particles. And you can see a little bit of the graphic of all this. 
and tell you, mm, it's not really very safe what we're getting. And now talking about what is the addictive compounds that we see in e-cigarettes or vaping. And one of the things that you're going to see is that we have nicotine, for example. And let me show you this slide about nicotine. And, and this is a fancy slide, and I apologize, but this is important because that tells me what is the behavior of somebody who is smoking and why nicotine, which is in this liquid that we're using on the vaping, is so important. Nicotine addiction is one of the most terrible addiction that we have. It's very common, it's legal, and it's very costly. So one pack a day of a cigarettes, it's $11 away. And let's make the math. This is almost $3,800 a year of a habit. E-cigarette can be as expensive. Everything depends on how much you're consuming. But what is nicotine doing to us? I want you to look here, and this is 8 a.m., 6 p.m., and 4 a.m. So this is the whole day. I wake up, and the first thing that I have is three zones where I am in the pleasure arousable zone, neutral zone, or I am withdrawing. And remember, this is addiction. I need it, otherwise my brain, and I feel very, very un unsatisfied, uncomfortable, jittery, and perhaps anxious. So what you have here is that every time somebody, and this is for cigarette, regular cigarette, you take a cigarette and you are in this mode. The levels of nicotine drops and you take the next cigarette and the next cigarette and the next cigarette. You fall asleep and the first thing you do, first thing in the morning is take the next cigarette. This is the addiction of nicotine. And this is a nice way to hook anyone, especially the young people. And those who have done it and say, doctor, I have been smoking. I know it is not good for me. However, I cannot quit. So this is amazing that you're making something that is addictive, caffeine, and you are charging for that $11 a day. So let's talk, and I am a pulmonologist, does vaping create problems? And here I'm going to show you what is a CAT scan. This is normal lungs, that how the lungs should be looking. And this is the images of this disease that we have seen, especially in 2019, which is the e-cigarette or vaping product use associated lung injury. And as you can see, those are very nasty images. And this is people who needs to be intensive care unit, be on a mechanical ventilator, meaning on a breathing machine. And of this event, we have an outbreak in this outbreak we find out that most of the cases were because they have uh, cannabis in the liquid and some form of vitamin E as a preservative. How big was the problem? 2,800 people got sick and admitted to the hospital with this problem, 68 deaths in the majority were people under 30 years of age. So this is not trivial and this is an acute process that can happen by using the baby. And what about the heart? There is few studies. Remember, less than 20 years since this product is in the market. And what we know is that if you were a former cigarette smoker or a former e-cigarette smoker, your risk, as you can see in this red arrow, it's going to be less than if you are a daily cigarette smoker or a daily vaping smoking or user. And you can see that regular cigarette smoking, it's more harmful than e-cigarette. However, this is not a zero risk. And this is one study and we need more time in order to get that. And unfortunately, market forces and the try to get people hooked to this go faster than what the research can give us as information to understand and guide the safety of those products. So. Can e-cigarette help us quit smoking? And the answer is, mm, I'm not sure. And it's being labeled as safer. I will say, you know what? It's less harmful. So let's try to use the right words for this. I hope that I show you some information that this is not a risk-free. 
that this is something that can cause directly harm to the lungs and to the heart and will not decrease the risk of cardiovascular disease if you're using this. However, it's less harmful than using regular cigarettes. What about using e-cigarette to stop smoking? So there is a study that started from, it's one year follow-up, so I'm using January to December, but it's only one year of follow-up and it say, can you sustain, stop smoking regular cigarette and we'll give you a vape or e-cigarette as a way to suppress this anxiety of having the cigarette and that can be your quitting tool. So what we found is the following, over one year, around 18% of those individuals that use the e-cigarette compared to those who only use nicotine replacement, the gum, the patch, or whatever form, there were only 10% who quit smoking. So it's almost twice, that is a good news. However, if we use other type of treatment that we know that are effective to quit smoking, and I'm using this, the Wellbutrin, or as you can see, and I'm going to use the commercial name, which is the Chantix plus nicotine, you reach 20 to 26%. So this is not better than the other treatments that we know can be effective for people who want to quit smoking. More importantly, among those who quit smoking, that 18% who definitely quit smoking, they were 80% of them were still using the vape or the e-cigarette after one year. So it's not that you are replacing the cigarette and using this for a short period of time, went off of that e-cigarette and now you're not using anything, which is the ideal. Remember, if I am a former smoker, you decrease the risk. Here, you're not a former smoker, you're a daily smoker, so you still have a risk because after one year, 80% still use the vape. So we need to understand a little bit this information because it's not make it super safe. So switching from smoking to e-cigarette does not appear to significantly lower the risk of having a cardiovascular event. And that is important also to understand among the people who were enrolled in this study. All right, so what are the take-home points? One, e-cigarette use has increased dramatically in the past decade among many people, and some of the time has been used as a way to quit smoking or being labeled in that way. Especially for the youngster, it's a dangerous process. For all of us, we need to understand, is really a good alternative? Should I use something else? There is a general public perception that e-cigarettes are harm-free and safer than alternative tobacco and or cigarette. And there is a growing evidence that e-cigarette can have adverse effect in the cardiovascular and lung system. I hope I was able to demonstrate that to you. So e-cigarette should not be marketed as a cardiovascular safe product. That is what we know right now. And we need more information. And that is takes time. And I don't want to experiment with any one of us in order to do that. Okay. And with that, I will stop and thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for that wonderful talk, Dr. Devo. You gave us a lot of information and you really helped us sort out fact and myth when it comes to e-cigarettes. So we appreciate you being here to our listeners. Please join us again next month for another episode of Patient Pulse. Thank you. 